Good evening, everyone. The time is 7.33. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, Councilwoman Ferguson, Vice President Ferguson, could you do the invocation, please? Good evening, everyone. Father God, we thank you. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. We thank you and we know that you are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega. We ask that you be in the midst of this meeting, that you would um, endow us with your wisdom, your gifts of counsel, and with peace. Father God, we ask that you bless the citizens of Glen Arden, the employees and all that who was associated with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, for those online uh, and in person, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, Council Clerk, could you do the roll call, please? Council Member Fareed. Council Member Fareed. She said here. Was, uh, I believe she, she said yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gray has to do he'll, that. He'll get it. Councilwoman McGeon is not here with us this evening. She's traveling. Council Member Harrison is not with us. Council Member Herring? Here. Councilwoman Jones? Here. Council Vice President Ferguson? Here. Council President Curtis? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or opposition? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Councilman Harris? Yeah, I think that with the um, R35 2023, the resolution to revise the rules and regulations, I thought it was mentioned that we were going to look these over because we have not had a um, we haven't had a chance to really see what they were about. And also when I did look them over, there was a lot of items missing in there. There's a lot of X's in there where things had to be filled in. There's some stuff in there that I would like to discuss as a council member. Also, um, you know, I don't think it was fair the way it was given to the citizens. The print was so small, they could not even ask any questions at the public hearing because it was just entirely too small, they couldn't read it. So I'm just asking that to be tabled until we can have actually have a discussion on that. Um, you mentioned that at the work session that we would discuss it. So I think I, I think we need to do that because there, there, there are a lot of missing things in there. Numbers, prices, we haven't agreed on prices, we haven't agreed on um, a number of things in there. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Jones. Since this is a resolution that I presented, we got this resolution back in June of 2022 and, the, and all of this information and we have not done anything with it. Uh, the goal room, just like any other uh, entity of the city, the police have the general orders. We have standard offer, operation, uh, standard procedures, op operation of procedures in certain offices. Uh, everything needs guidelines. The guidelines for the goal room needs to be updated. And we've drug our feet. Oh, it'll be a year in June. In June 2022, this stuff was, pro uh, was this information was presented. Now. I am willing to table the uh, resolution as, as, if we set aside a time to sit down and work, really work on it. The things that Mr. Herring is saying are true. Uh, the, as far as the, um, uh, the print for the residents, what they received, I, re I came, I sat there that night, the, the night of public hearing. I went upstairs in the council chambers and reprinted all of that stuff and made it available in the vestibule for citizens for the next day if they wanted it. So that, uh, I, I'm, we can do that again. But like I said, I am will willing to table it if we work on this as a council at the next work session because this, we, this has been sitting since June of 2022 and the goal room needs guidance. The staff needs to know what we're doing, where we're going. The city needs to know how we're gonna handle the goal room. If we say this is our enterprise entity, an enterprise entity is to make money, to generate revenue. 
we need to sit down and look and some of the rules that's in the gold room now such as BYOB those have are outdated in fact in Prince George's County that is outlawed so those things need to be addressed there are several things yes that need to be addressed in that resolution and in these rules that we need to go over as a council but if we're not going to sit down and and really go over them and, and put them into effect then uh i, I we, we're just spinning our wheels and doing nothing and something needs to be done because there are some things going on in that go room such as serving alcohol that need to be addressed thank okay. you thank you councilman jones any other comment so a motion to postpone uh -huh. so is there a motion to postpone the vote on r35-2023 a motion to postpone until what is the next work session june, june. i'm sorry i don't have a calendar okay. June 5th. June 5th. June 5th. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, do we have to vote? Do we have to vote? Not unless there's opposition. No. Uh, okay. Any opposition to us postponing to June 5th? Motion. Here in motion carries. All right. Any other discussion on the current agenda? Hearing none, uh, by unanimous consent, the agenda has been accepted with the postponement of Resolution R35-2023 to June 5th. All right. First up on the agenda uh, uh, are the minutes uh, for April 3rd work session, um, April 11th public hearing, and April 17th regular session. Uh, is there a motion to uh, adopt the minutes? These Mr. minutes. Mr. Chair, with the adjustment to your agenda, you need to approve the agenda. Right. Yeah. Oh. She addressed an item on the agenda. She struck the item from the agenda. She struck number R35. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So just... now you need to move to accept the agenda because you have to drop out to the agenda. Now you need to uh, address or accept the agenda with the strikeout. Right, okay. Is there a motion to accept the agenda with the strikeout? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none by unanimous consent. The agenda is adopted. Thank you. Thank you, parliamentarian. I appreciate that. All right. Now, first up, uh, the uh, is the approval of meeting minutes for April third work session, April eleventh public hearing, and April seventeenth regular session. Is there a motion to adopt these three minutes? So moved. Meeting minutes. Is there a second? Second. And in discussion, hearing none, by unanimous consent, these meeting, meeting minutes are hereby adopted. All right, on to legislation. First up is ordinance 0 06 2023, an emergency ordinance to reappropriate funds for fiscal year 2023. Madam Clerk. Point of order, Mr. President. Before we can even um, have the clerk read it, we have to make a motion to adopt it as an emergency ordinance to bring it to the floor. Okay. Is there a motion to bring this to the floor as an emergency ordinance? So move. Is there a second? Second. In discussion? Okay. By that consent, um, you, you gotta you gotta do a voice vote on ordinances. Ordinances. Yes. Yeah. All right, Madam Clerk, Councilwoman Faree. She's speaking. I can't hear her. Councilwoman Faree, could you? 
can't hear her. <coughs> She's saying yes, but I can't. I very vaguely. Can can she uh, hit it in chat? Because we got to get her yes, and we got to have five. Councilwoman Fareed, could you put your? Oh, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilman Herring. Yes. Councilwoman Jones. Yes. Council Vice President. Yes. Anderson. Council President Curtis. Yes. Okay, five, All right. Um, I think we could read it first. Right. Yeah. It's ready to go. Yeah. Okay. All right, Madam Clerk. Sure. Emergency Ordinance 06, sponsored by Council President Curtis, at the request of the administration. The public hearing was held on May 9th. We're in regular session today, May 15th, and it was introduced on May 1st an emergency ordinance to reappropriate funds for fiscal year 2023. Whereas the city of Glen Arden is a municipality, municipal corporation of the state of Maryland and operating under article 11-E of the Constitution of Maryland, subsection 5-202 of the annotated code of Maryland as amended. And whereas under the charter, article eight finance section 808, Section D, transfer of appropriation. At any time during the fiscal year, the city manager may transfer part of any unencumbered appropriation balance within an, ex within an exp expeditious <laughs> expenditure clarification, classification and whereas under chapter, th chapter article six, general powers of the council, section 602, Number five, appropriations. It states that the city council has the authority to appropriate municipal monies for any purpose within the powers of the council. And whereas under the city of Glen Arden Charter, Article 3, Section 308E states an emergency ordinance shall become effective on the due date specified in the ordinance, but no ordinance shall become effective until approved by the mayor or passed over his or her veto by the council. And whereas the city council has the ultimate fiduciary responsibility to steward municipal monies and deem the following reappropriation transfers to be necessary to complete capital projects approved by the council. Section one, Glen Arden Parkway milling and resurfacing project. Revenue, $194,829.80 from city reserves to increase the FY23 budget to cover costs for milling and resurfacing for the Glen Arden Parkway from Bright Seat Road to Jeff Road. Expenditures. Transfer $40,000 from Public Works budget line items 7240, 60, 60, 10, snow removal to capital budget account 10, 80, 30, 76, 14 for the milling and resurfacing of Glen Arden Parkway from Bright Seat to Jeff Road. C, increase FY23 capital budget expenditures account 7614.3.8.10 by $194,829.80. Section two, concrete improvements, sidewalks, curbs, and gutters, Glen Arden Parkway, revenue, and appropriate 100,000 from highway user funds to the FY23 budget. Expenditure, increase FY23 budget expenditures, account 7614.30.80.10 by 100,000 for concrete improvements on Glen Arden Parkway from Bright Seat to Jeff Road. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of Glen Arden, Maryland, sitting in regular session on the 15th day of May, 2023, that this emergency ordinance is hereby declared approved. Be it further resolved and ordained by the City Council of Glen Arden, Maryland, that this or ordinance is and shall become effective immediately following approval by the mayor or passage by the council over the mayor's veto. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a motion to bring to the floor for a vote? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Madam Clerk. I'm sorry. Councilwoman Fareed. Is she answering in the chat? 
Councilwoman, yes, she did. Okay. Sorry. Council, Council Member Herring? Yes. Councilwoman Jones? Yes. Council Vice President Ferguson? Yes. And Council President Kurt? Yes. Vote carries 5 0. Okay. Thank you. Next is resolution. Oh, so. Struck this one out. Which means that the next one up is resolution R36 2023 resolution to approve the removal and replacement of concrete sidewalks, curb and gutters, and aprons on Glen Arden Parkway. Madam Clerk. Resolution 36-23. Sponsors Council President Derek Curtis. At the request of the administration, the public hearing was May 9th, 2023. Uh, we're in regular session today and the, it was introduced on May 1st, 2023. A resolution to approve the removal and replacement of concrete sidewalks, curves, and gutters and aprons on Glen Arden Parkway. Whereas it is necessary to repair and or replace various sidewalks, curbs, gutters, and aprons in the city of Glen Arden. And whereas the city of Glen, the city has received a proposal from NZI Construction Corporation attached exit exhibit A to remove the re remove and repair concrete sidewalks, curbs and gutters on Glen Arden Parkway from Bright Seat Road to Jeff Road according to the minimum specifications provided in exhibit A. Whereas this work is authorized without a formal bid process pursuant to section 818C in lieu of a contract bid process required by this section and in place of section 821 A, B, and C of the city charter. Whenever a federal, state, or county, or local government, or any agency thereof whose purchasing policies are comparable to those of the city of Glen Arden has conducted a bid and awarded a contract, the city may purchase by contract the bid item at the bid price from the successful bidder, subject to approval of the mayor of four council. Prior to the city's purchase of an item, service, or material from a successful bidder or another jurisdiction, the city manager shall obtain a copy of its jurisdiction's purchasing policy. Whereas Prince George's County has conducted competitive bidding pro a competitive bidding process and awarded a contract to NZI Construction Corporation, PG County Contract 932H, to perform concrete work that includes the removal and replacement of concrete sidewalk, curb, gutters, and apron. Whereas Prince George's County purchasing policies are comparable to those of the city and whereas the council declares the provision of section 818B of the city charter have been satisfied so as to justify the waiver of the competitive bidding process section by, by section 818A of the city charter. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Glen Arden, Maryland, sitting in session on this 15th day of May, 2023, as follows. Number one, that a contract for removal, repair, and replacement of concrete sidewalks, curbs, gutters, and aprons of, on the Glen Arden Parkway be, be signed with NZI Corporation in, total, in the total proposed amount of $100,000, Exhibit A. Number two, the contract work shall be charged to the FY23 Capital Project budget line item 7614-30-80-10 and this resolution shall take effect immediately upon pass. Thank you. Is there a motion to bring this to the floor for a vote? So move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Here and none by unanimous consent. This resolution is hereby adopted. Next up is resolution R37-2023, a resolution to approve concrete work, including sidewalks on McLean Avenue and Hamlin Street. Madam Clerk. Resolution 37, 
sponsor is Robin Jones, Councilwoman, at the request of the administration. The public hearing was held on May 9, 2023. We were sitting in regular session on the 15th of May, and the introduction was May 1st. A resolution to approve the removal and replacement of concrete sidewalks, curb, gutter, and aprons, as well as the installation of new sidewalks, curb, gutters, curb, and gutters at specified locations on Hamlin Street and McLean Avenue. Whereas it is necessary to install new sidewalks, curb, and gutters, as well as repair and replace various sidewalks and curbs and gutters and aprons on Hamlin Street and McLean Avenue in the city of Glen Arden. Whereas the city has received a proposal from NCI Construction Corporation to undertake the installation, removal, and repair of concrete sidewalks, curb, and gutters on McLean Avenue, and new installation of concrete sidewalks, curb, and gutters on Hamlin, Exhibit A. Whereas this work is authorized without a formal bid process pursuant to Section 818C in lieu of of the contract bid process required by this section and in place of section 821 A, B, and C of the city charter. Whenever a federal, state, county, or local government or any agency thereof whose purchasing policies are comparable to those of the city of Glenard has been conducted, has conducted a bid and awarded contract, the city may purchase by contract bid item at the bid price from the successful bidder subject to approval of its mayor and city council. Prior to the city's purchase of an item, service, or material from a successful bidder or any other jurisdiction, the city manager shall obtain a copy of, of the jurisdiction's purchasing policy. Whereas Prince George's County has conducted a competitive, competitive bidding process and awarded a contract to NZI Con Construction Corporation, PG County Contract 932-8, to perform services such as a new concrete installation and removal and replacement of concrete sidewalks and curb and gutters. Whereas Prince George's County's purchasing policies are comparable to those of the city and whereas the council declares that the provisions of section 818 of the city charter have been satisfied so, it as, so, so as to justify the waiver of the competitive bidding required by section 818A of the city charter. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Glen Arden, sitting in session on the 15th day of May 2023, 20, as follows. One, the contract for new concrete installation on Hamlin Street, the total is $11,312.45, and the removal and repair of competitive sidewalks, of con repair of concrete sidewalks, curb and gutters, and aprons on McLean Avenue. Total fifteen thousand eighty-five twenty-two cents are signed with NZI Corporation in total proposed amount of twenty-six thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars and sixty-seven cents. Exhibit B. Payment for the contract for the contract work shall be charged to the FY Capital Budget Line Item seventy-six fourteen thirty dash eighty dash ten, and this resolution shall become effective immediately upon passage. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a motion to bring this to the floor for a vote? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or opposition? Hearing none by unanimous consent, this resolution is hereby adopted. That's 37, right? Okay. And that's it for the legislation. Uh, now moving on to uh, topics of discussion and consensus. Um, at the very least, discussion. Do you want me to lead or do you want to? Okay. All right. So, council members, in your packet, there is a memo. Uh, as you recall, when we passed the FY23 budget, uh, at that time, we set aside funds for staff uh, salary increases and bonuses uh, with the hope that um, uh, we can reward staff for a job well done. Uh, at that time, the, when we passed it, the council stipulated that we would set aside funds for that, but 
any uh, allocation of those uh, funds had to be approved um, via consensus by the council. Um, unfortunately, there's been you know, turnover at the uh, city manager position, so the the original goal was it for it to be um, implemented in December, but uh, we're here now. It's almost at the end of the fiscal year, and it has not been allocated yet. But there is a process now in place. I hope the council members have read ahead on this um, and open the floor to discussing um, allocating. Uh, the the budgeted bonuses as outlined in this memo. Any discussion? Mr. President, I mean, I, I would have liked to have had this at the work session so we could really discuss it. Um, I don't think this is the time to discuss it on the floor right now because I'm just looking at the memo and I haven't really digested it. Um, and even if we had, and a memo was done on the 12th, when did we get this memo? Is today the first time we're getting this? I see it's dated on the 12th. I don't remember seeing this anywhere else. It was in it was in a packet. Yeah, I didn't see it. it. I must didn't get it in mind because I know I would have saw this. You know, I am about salaries. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not ready to discuss it myself. So now I, I will point out that the the salary increase piece will not be touched. Uh, the total amount of the. Um, and just a disclaimer, we're not going to talk about individual people. It's just overall um, allocation of the bonuses. Uh, the total bonuses, I believe, come to $69,000 of the bonus incentive. So there aren't any salary increases. Uh, they, uh, the salary increases, I believe, we will address with the budget. Um, right now, we did set aside some money for bonuses to... Um, to, I don't want to say satisfy, but um, it's incentivized staff until we were able to get the, um, the consultant in for the salary study and then make a, a you know, a informed decision with that with the budget. So the only amount that's being touched, sorry, the only amount that's being touched is what we set aside for bonuses for staff. Has anybody else had a chance to look at this? I yeah. I, I, you know, I believe um, all our staff work hard, um, and you know, it's something that should have ideally been implemented in December, and now here we are in May, about to close out the fiscal year, and nothing has been done. Um, I. Uh, strongly support this. It comes under the $80,000 that we uh, allocated for this amount. Uh, it's a very thoughtful process. Um, it's based on the ratings uh, that employees were given. So based on your rating, that is what you receive. So if, uh, yeah, I believe no one under a three receive any bonuses. But if you got a three, then it's 3%. If you got a five, which I believe there's only one, then you got 5%. So there, are, there aren't any exorbitant bonuses included in here, and this takes care of all of our staff. Okay? Um, Mr. President. Councilman Harry. Yes. Um I mean, like I said, I'm not against bonuses. I just, like I said, I just wish we would have had this in the work session and it could have been discussed and brought to our attention because, like I said, I didn't see it. Um, also, it says, you know, you received the evaluation scores for each employee, and that should have been shared with really all the council also so that we can see, you know, what we're doing and where we're going and where we're going with, you know, just for informational purposes. Um, I mean, that's just my thing about it. I just think things like this should not be put on the floor like this until we really had a full discussion on it. You know, um, like I said, it's in the budget. It is in the budget, so I mean, we can move forward with it, whatever we're gonna do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, well, uh, hearing no other discussion or motion to table it, then we'll just move forward with uh, a consensus on accepting um, the memo to allocate the bonuses. Um, well, is it a since we're in the public meeting, it's just a vote, correct? 
We don't need a consensus because we're just voting on this motion to accept this, a motion to accept this bonus uh, um, recommendation from the city manager. So I'll make a motion that we accept this uh, bonus recommendation by the city manager and the treasurer for implementation. Okay, so second. Second. Any discussion or opposition? Hearing none, the memo is accepted and we move forward with this, with the allocation of bonuses. All right. Okay. Moving right along, uh, reports. First up is the mayor's report. Mayor Cross. Good evening. Thank you, Council President. Uh, this is the mayor's report. I would like to just acknowledge the amount of HOAs and the meetings that they've had have been quite productive. The work that has been taken forth to ensure, particularly in the Frost community, that the parking passes have been handed out. And in the Woodmore Town Center at Glen Arden community, discussions on the road transition. Uh, we did get a chance to talk to that as an update to DR Horton as well as to DPI. Uh, there has been a little bit of work as far as civil uh, citations that have been written by DPI for passing non-compliance items. Uh, it is not the recommendation that we transition those roads at this time relative to the aprons as well as um, the under drain needs to be assessed before that happens because that is something as one of the citations. While there isn't a lot of traffic on the road now, there will be a lot of traffic on the road as soon as Woodmore Overlook is completed. So we just want to be careful that the residents aren't uh, transitioned that fee. The annual budget has been submitted. Citizens should be uh, looking at that. As far as the state of Glen Arden delivery, that address happened. Uh, we're grateful for everyone and the outpour of support that came back uh, from the meeting. There was a little bit of a flip -o, but. Uh, looks like it went out well. So thank you to the video team for getting that taken care of. Uh, as far as the mayor's office, there were 18 community calls and meetings. Um, International Culture Day uh, was on May 13th. It was a, a very good turnout for it. And uh, even had an opportunity to expand it to the swimming classes as well as some of the other citizens that came through. Uh, Judge Lavania Woods uh, supported them in their school steering committee, uh, as well as supporting the Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, for the DCAO, one of the wonderful things about uh, County Executive Angela Alsobrook and what she's been doing with the mayors here, uh, is she's been having meetings with various county uh, level programs and county officials. And DCAO was a meeting that we had on April the 18th at the Wayne Curry building. The beauty of that is we talked about the different government infrastructure technologies as well as environmental services that are being evolved here in the county. And one of the key pieces is the improvement of the water quality and the compliance with the federal and state programming as well as the improvement of stormwater management controls. Um, this is gonna filter the pollutants out of our work local as well as county-based businesses. So this is a good news story. Uh, many of the residents have talked about the wastewater management in many different of uh, our municipalities of 27. Uh, as well as uh, alleviating the residential flooding. So uh, Frost Community, we did take that comment, even though we have put a work around, there needs to be a county response and the county has heard our cry. Uh, we did get an opportunity to get educated on the county's litter reduction program, as well as uh, pollution prevention and climate change. Uh, some of the best practices that we're looking at across the nation that can be executed right here in gorgeous Prince George's. Uh, that's part of the beautification program. Uh, Sheriff Carr had a dinner, dinner with all of the mayors on the 27th of April. Now in this round table, uh, we talked about some of the crime that's happened, multiple shootings right here in the city of Glen Arden, um, drive-bys, if you will. Thank God no one has been um, hurt at this point, uh, but we do want to elevate uh, the need for that discussion. And uh, we were at earlier um, district 
uh, Representative County Council Jolene Ivey hosted a uh, security awareness program and that included the Sheriff Department as well as Chief Ozzie for Prince George's County. As we're looking at a corporate response to the crime that continues to elevate itself, even though we've seen a reduction, there was reported over 2,300 vehicles, mostly Hondis and Kias, that's been um, robbed or stolen and they are being used in crimes and dumped in our cities. So see something, say something. Uh, the police are on an elevated alert for the vehicular theft particularly. Uh, message from Chief Az: don't become a target. Let's keep ourselves uh, and our cars free of any distractions. Amazing opportunity to witness a trailer premiere. Uh, that's, we talk about diversity and inclusion. That's Mayor's push for 2023. Not just coming to the dance, but asking folks to dance. We have made a push to put um, Spanish language translation, but our city has a large number of hearing impaired and autistic uh, community members. And we need to expand what we're doing for the inclusion piece of all cultures as well as those that have um, handicaps or mental uh, disabilities. But that was an amazing opportunity. That 30-day movie will premiere and has gone to global networks and is translated in five different languages. So we'll continue to take a note from the communities at large that as we're growing our communities, we must definitely grow this city. Uh, attended the Mayor's Association meeting as well as Prince George's County Mayor's Association meeting and held a meeting with the residents at Glen Arden Hills, the property manager there, uh, to take on some uh, support for broadband expansion. Uh, we are working with a local provider, Emerald Coast Government, ACP sponsored, to be able to allow those 169 eligible residents to have access to the internet. Uh, as we are looking at most of what the city pushes out comes out on the internet platform or on the network, we are ensuring that every citizen in Glen Arden that desires will have access to an internet tablet. Uh, please call 301-773-2100, let the mayor's office know and we'll get you one of those tablets. Prince George's County Board of Directors Executive Committee meeting uh, was held and we were also helping uh, if you will, for any person who is experiencing depression, anxiety, thoughts of suicide, uh, we want to make sure that we don't take our eyes off the prize. You are a valued member of this family called Glen Arden, and Mental Health Awareness Month is what we're in here. I had the unique opportunity to be introduced by An Anthony Anderson during the It's Okay to Not Be Okay program, which was held at the Anthem on this past Saturday. Uh, this program held an opportunity for our county as well as leaders from uh, businesses and across our great nation to talk about this post-traumatic stress syndrome, and it's not just a military issue. Our children are experiencing it, our families are experiencing it, we're talking about the vehicular theft, we're talking about crime in general. Uh, so we are working hard to pull together our community and re-engage our 18 to 24 year olds and connect them to community resources for support. Uh, as well as our second chance returning citizens, uh, acknowledge uh, Councilman Herring and Harrison for their work with State's Attorney Brayboy uh, on that event. And we are continuing to push for our second chance returning citizens at all tents incorporating into the city. The Office of Emergency Management, uh, Prince George's County Homeland Security CERT training as well as CPR training is down in the books. We are working with the American Legion and the um, amateur radio team to pull together our uh, City of Glen Arden emergency response strategy. I'm looking for that to be completed uh, in this fall. Annapolis legislation, happy to say supported and passed Board of Education school system revisions uh, supported the campaign for the CEO search for Prince George's County, as well as the alcoholic and beverage class B beer, wine, and liquor license. And one huge one is we now have breakfasts in the classroom that is passed at the Senate. 
delegates all the way back down across the state of Maryland. So we are grateful for all of those, as well as the American Heart Association for allowing uh, Mayor Cross, as well as the NAACP, to come to the Annapolis State House and speak to get those passed. That puts $7,550,000 uh, $7, dollars on the ground in those bills so that's a good thing education and economic development is on the move in prince george's county uh, so with all of that much more legislation and grants you'll read them in my report um, as far as projected um, we are targeting august the 5th which is the first saturday in august for the huge back to school K through 12 transitional youth extravaganza. This year, uh, we are targeting a growth uh, of 400 and we have already had an outpour of folks asking when and how they can support. Uh, the Creative Youth Art Summit and Conference was kicked off on February the 4th. Uh, we have had an amazing 400 uh, young folks show up and a lot of community leaders like True Face by Grace, international fashion designer, and Channel 9 covered it. So we thank you again for the opportunity to serve. Thank you, Mayor Cross. City Manager Barber. I'm sorry. City Manager. I'm sorry. Thank you. Are there any questions um, from the council member on the mayor's report? Okay. Here none. We'll move on. City Manager Beverly Habak. I'm sorry, hello? Oh, wow, thank you. We can hear you now, Councilwoman Free. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, oh, it's an echo. I just wanted to make sure I heard it correctly. Did the mayor say that if residents want a tablet, that they can call to City Hall and, and get a free tablet? Mayor Cross, did you hear? Thank you, Councilwoman Fareed. If residents are in need of expanded brand, broadband tablets, yes, call City Hall. We have a program that's in place and we'll make sure that there's one sent directly to their homes, but they have to self-identify. There's only one per family. So if they have not yet received access to uh, the internet notebooks that are part of the ACP program from President Biden, we'll be happy to support that. Note this program goes president to president. Thank you. Councilman Harry. Mr. President, um, yeah. I did have one question and I thought about it. So, Mayor, what did you say about frost, flooding and frost? What are they doing over there now? So we talked to the DCAO about some of the work that they're doing as far as environmental programs and storm water management and the flooding of residents is one of the key pieces. It's not just frost, it's across Prince George's County. As we know, many of our residential communities are built in creeks and lakes which are drained by the contractor, not necessarily in aqueducts or water retention or burn put up. So as it pertains to the development for the DCAO, then we need to keep a lookout for what we can acknowledge for Sprouse community. And I do note that there was a PVC piping situation put out, but there needs to be something more permanent than that. Because forever, water's gonna come back to the source. And that's happening all across Prince George's County. Okay, because I was asking because that program, I mean, I had been working over there on that project for a while, and I was wondering where they were with it, because again, we had reached out to um, DPI and um, stormwater management for the county. And there's a number of situations that we're waiting on from the county to do something. They did the PCV pipe and they also had to uh, fix one of the outlets that were caved in. So I just was wondering, have they done any more because they were supposed to be coming back? And I know they've been waiting to hear from them. So, um, okay, I just want to know if they had come out. So obviously they had not come out yet. So I'll have to reach out to them. All right, thank you. And then also, sir, you probably want to reach out to DCAO Holt, H-O-L-T. Uh, and he's part of the overall environmental services team that's going to be taking care of this particular issue, particularly dealing with stormwater management and that flooding of private properties. I can provide you that detail. Yeah, please do, because I, I need to get him in contact with the person that I was working with, because they were on a tenor, they were on the books to have something done over there. Um, 
based on their phasing program. They have a three-phase phase program. That's phase one, phase two, and phase three. And I think they were meeting, they're meeting the qualifications for barely for phase two, but we are trying to get them to a phase one, which would automatically extend it, uh, funds immediately to their situation based on the conditions of their homes and the flooding and the, the health issues over there. So, all right, yeah, if you could send me that information, that'd be great. Okay. Any other questions? No, I'm done. Thanks. Okay. Now, moving on to City Manager Beverly Habata's report. Uh, good evening, Council and Mayor. Um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things in my report uh, and then uh, you know, move on to the Chief's report and any questions you might have on anything that's in the combined report here from public works, et cetera, um, code enforcement. Um, we have started to have staff meetings following council public uh, sessions so we can follow up on things that uh, council has requested after you voted on uh, your legislation and uh, in general follow up uh, to things that have been on your agenda either the work session or the public hearing and then after the public session then we meet so tomorrow we will be doing our third uh, senior staff meeting to go over things that happened this evening. So that's going to be a regular meeting with, with staff, senior staff, to go over things. Um, page two, um, the, um, the thing I would, I would highlight are the citizen inquiries. Uh, we've had uh, calls from a, a Ward 1 resident regarding two stop signs. Two locations that uh, empty out on a Martin Luther King Highway, one at James Fletcher Way, and the other at uh, Delwood Court. And I've reviewed this, uh, these with Mr. Herring. Um, and so we need to replace, definitely replace the stop sign at the James Fletcher Way, which is not there. And in looking at the code, uh, the ordinance uh, for this location is not listed in the code, even though apparently the stop sign was there previously. So uh, what we're going to do is put an ordinance in front of council uh, to add that stop sign back in so that it can be legally put up at James Farmer Way at Martha Luther King. Um, and there will probably be a recommendation uh, from me to um, um, provide uh, the city manager the authority by executive order when things like this come up where there are stop signs that have are you know not on, in, in ordinance form in the code uh, to allow the uh, city manager to replace uh, them by uh, executive order uh, at some point is an easier way rather than having you all deal with stop signs um, unless you want to okay on um, uh, the second inquiry was about a uh, uh, suggestion that the addresses for code violations not include the actual street address, but just the street only, so that folks might not have a problem with being targeted in their neighborhood if the address is listed. That was a suggestion, which I thought was a good one. So henceforth, when you see the uh, code enforcement uh, reports, they're going to come to you with a street listed only on the violation where it's occurred. I um, received an inquiry from the Glen Arden Housing Authority about the ARPA funds and the city's process for providing assistance. And the draft of the um, process will be coming to council as per the resolution along with the other ARPA uh, programs uh, for your approval before we move forward with any disbursement of funds. Uh, we had a request from State Delegate uh, Alston's office about sponsoring a breakfast club meeting with constituents on a regular basis at City Hall. Uh, I'm waiting for the, the, um, the email on the specifics uh, from uh, Delegate Alston, her office, and haven't had that yet. So. Um, uh, we'll see what they had in mind, and we'll let you know if that's something that council members would, would like to attend on a regular basis. Okay. Um, the first month I was here was uh, um, obviously uh, working with uh, the treasurer on uh, preparing the, uh, the mayor's transmission of the city budget to city council, the numbers, and... Uh, 
um, and making it available so that the mayor uh, met the deadline of April 15th. Um, and um, we have uh, some correspondence listed here, some of which you already are aware of. The email from Mr. Proctor of GS Proctor regarding the uh, DR Horton Home Builders uh, uh, transfer of streets, which the mayor referenced in her report. Uh, grants identified to pursue um, on pay, the bottom of page three and um, page four. Uh, we've added some to that uh, the ch in addition to the charging and fueling uh, infrastructure discretionary grant that's coming up May 30th. There's a couple more that you'll see in the next report that we're looking at. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? That you, uh, did you want to go over the chief's or the treasurer's report, or uh, I think Mr. Simpson's report is uh, is there, and the code report is there, and HR's report is there, and the webmasters is there, and I think the treasurer's report for the month of March was sent to the council. So. Okay. Are there any questions from the council on any of the administrative reports? Uh, council President. Councilman Jones. Um, she, did, uh, she gave us a report for, mentioned the reports, but I wanted to ask uh, Chief Bryant concerning his report. I have questions. Uh, I'm looking at your report. Uh, Point of order, Mr. Uh, I mean, Ms. Uh, Councilman Jones, if I may, could we ask him to give his report? Know. You know, so because I mean, the citizens want to hear, it, and it's on the agenda. So, can we ask him to give his report? Then we can ask questions of him yeah. if that's not it. You know. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Chief Brian, if you want. One second. Um, Vice President Ferguson has a question for uh, Ms. Abad. Yes, City Manager. Um, the request for the Breakfast Club meeting. Was there any um, particular place in the city hall? Uh, the free, uh, it says on a regular basis, because that uh, like once a month. Um, yeah, once a month, and I didn't get a sense of any particular room was requested at the at the you know just that an email would be coming uh, that, that there was a request to hold the breakfast club meeting here at city hall someplace. Okay. Um, someone will be getting back with you. With the yes, they have not sent me that email yet from her her office. I may have to reach out to find out uh, now the session's over. What uh, what the thought is on that? And this would be for the citizens of Glen Arden. Yes. Thank you. All right, Chief. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah. Chief Bryant, um, Chief of Police Report. Um, last week it came out, it was announced again that um, City of Glen Arden, the third safest city um, in the state of Maryland. Um, but however, like the mayor stated, um, working with uh, Prince George's County Police Department and other municipalities, um, crime is up um, and it's starting to spread into the city of Glen Arden. Um, we have a few incidents. Um, where no one was um, hurt, but we had two incidents where um, gunshots were fired and um, we had to do vandalism reports. Um, we working with the Prince George's County Police Department mm -hmm. to uh, ho uh, hopefully identify uh, suspects and what's going on in reference to uh, the shootings that occurred in the city of Glen Arden. Um, Prince George's County Police Department also uh, made an arrest of a homicide victim that uh, resided in the city of Glen Arden. Uh, they was able to do that last uh, week um, and taking that person off the street. Um, we thought um, from some of the in intel we got, um, that person was a part of some of the crime that was occurring within the city of Glen Arden. So we're happy to have that person removed from the street. Um, one of the things we've been doing as of late, since we've been having uh, crime up, is that we've been doing proactive um, traffic enforcement um, particularly um, on uh, Glen Arden Parkway, um, Martin Luther King Avenue, Bright Sea Road, uh, on, our, on our main thoroughfares. And what we've done, if you look at the report, 
in many of these incidents, we were able to uh, arrest uh, individuals who had uh, open warrants. Um, we covered guns, knives, machetes, drugs, um, and a lot, we got a lot of these people off the street who had open warrants, not only in the county, um, in the state of Maryland, and we even had one out of the state. Um, some of the people that we're encountering uh, call themselves sovereign citizens. Um, they try to present themselves as uh, diplomats in which they have no authority, no power. Um, when I was in comparative compliance class, um, there's a PowerPoint distributed that I'll be sharing with the council in the mayor in reference to the sovereign citizens. Um, they're to be treated like regular citizens. What we find with the sovereign citizens is that um, when we stop them, the vehicles they always drive, um, there's always something wrong with the tags, so that's why they get stopped initially. But once we stop them, they go in the front and rave about the vehicle belonging to them. The vehicle's not registered to them, don't have their name on it, and they try to uh, present themselves as diplomats. Mm -hmm. And um, I had questions about it prior to the um, comparative compliance class, but now I have a better understanding. And as I stated, I'll be sharing that information uh, with the council and the mayor. So um, with these individuals, um, they come up with their own documents. Um, they present themselves as diplomats and the right protocols to treat them as regular citizens. And if they violate, uh, we arrest them, impound their cars and so forth. Uh, we had a couple of similar incidents that I had to address as the chief of police for the city of Glen Arden and in which we were right and correct in what we did as far as um, having a car impounded. And um, we even had one that was arrested um, who actually um, attempted to fight one of my officers after they uh, pulled him over in a traffic stop, claiming that he's a diplomat. Um, as you can see through this report, when you get a chance, if you look through it, um, with the pro you'll see that we picked up on the proactive enforcement. Um, also, the weather's starting to change. Um, we got these guys on the ATVs. They just happen to be out there today. Uh, prior to you individuals coming into the meeting, um, they know we can't chase them. Uh, so what we're doing is, um, if they stop at a certain location, what we're advising our officers to do, um, see if they can go get as close as they can and turn on their body warrant cameras to see if we can get tags and try to get information so we can try to get warrants for these individuals because they know in, um, in Maryland and D.C., we can't chase them, so they do things to provoke uh, the police to try to get us into a vehicle pursuit. Um, but we were successful um, with the help of Ms. Jones last year when there's a, um, they had an event at the Gold Room and they came across the street from the Gold Room and she alerted us to it. Uh, we was able to get one tag and uh, identify that individual. Um, so we're aware of who that individual is. And, and of course, they don't live in the city of Glen Arden, but they ride around and go to different parts of the city um, the county and all over. Um, so that's what we're dealing with. Um, in reference to um, upcoming events, um, Judge Savannah Woods Elementary, uh, they're having a health expose on uh, May 25th and the first, I think the second, just before school's out, they're gonna be doing a field day. Um, I know the mayor and myself, we uh, pretty much attended a lot of the events last year, so they're asking for us to come out again and support them um, with the health expose and a field day. So uh, we'll be doing that. Also, um, we'll be having uh, a cookout. It's gonna be a police community cookout. Um, last year when I came, my first year, I didn't meet the chief cookout. Um, since I've been here a year now, it's no, no longer meet the chief, I've met, um, quite a few citizens, so we're gonna name it, we named it um, Police Community Cookout, and that'll be on June 3rd, um, starting at noon until uh, four o'clock. Um, Ms. Ward has placed that information on the sites, and we'll be passing our flyers in the neighborhoods. Um, and um, I'd like to commend uh, Councilman Herring, Hairston, um, and everybody, um, the Glen Arden administration for an outstanding job um, with the expungement fair. Um, I happened to run into an individual that I spoke to on that day. He was at the 7-Eleven with his grandma. Uh, he was very happy to have the expungement, introduced me to his grandmother. And I ran into another individual um, 
the Monday after the expungement. So that was a great, very good event. Um, very, very well prepared. Um, the kind of events we need to have in the city of Glen Arden. Um, in the teamwork and support that was provided by everyone. Um, the council, uh, the mayor came by to speak. So um, very successful event. And um, I appreciate that. And that's all I have for the chief's report. Thank you, Chief Bryant. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Jones. Okay, I just have one question uh, because in the mayor's report it was mentioned that there are multiple shootings in the city of Glen Arden, and I didn't see any shootings in your uh, report. The only one I know of is the one that you sent us about over in the 1400 block of Second Street, where there was property damage due to uh, some random shooting. How are there? Right. What other shootings? Well, we had a, we had another one. They, they won't be in this report. They'd be in the upcoming report. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We just had uh, two events. Uh, the one on Second Street, and then we had another one um, over um, off of MLK, where they uh, they shot an individual. They was trying to um, trying to shoot, and we had some vandalism in reference to that. So in both of those incident, um, the vandalism, um, the individual I spoke of that was arrested on a warrant by the county. We think he was um, a key player in reference to that. So um, hopefully we won't have any more mm -hmm. since those two incidents, but we did have the two incidents um, and they'd be an upcoming report. Oh, okay. Um, they didn't make the I report. Mean, I, the, I think the meeting with the, the, the Sheriff Carr was like last month. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, you're saying now that there was, uh, the city of Glen Arden is experiencing multiple shootings. <laughs> Those are the only, the, that was the only one that I know of. And then of course, now right. you say there was two. It's, right. it's not like this is something that's ongoing every day, every- No, no, know, no. And, um, and, and, and that's why I spoke with being the third safe city. Again, that's why I brought that up to um, reference that the fact, um, if you go back and look at our stats um, for the year um, with the Uniform Crime Report, uh, that's where the information comes from. Um, I think some people get it, um, confused with the fact that um, some parts of Glen Arden is, falls on the county. So certain reports and certain parts of the, um, Glen Arden is handled by the county. Um, the incorporated parts are handled by the City of Glen Arden Police Department. So. Okay. Um, that's some of the mis, um, misinformation that we get sometimes. Um, okay. Okay. And so as far as the, uh, the ATV, well, the two dirt bikes and the ATV, they were coming down the wrong side of the road where I'm coming up, they're coming right at me. Right. So that's why I mentioned that to Almost you. Definitely. And, that and like is said, definitely, um, that will be an issue if they continue to do that. Right. So, um, and they know we can't chase them. So, right. um, they also called me, um, and told me that day in the area. Because what happens is um, when they go through multiple um, municipalities, we all share the same air, um, air radio air. Mm -hmm. So the information is provided to us so we'd be prepared for them. And they know we can't chase them. So what we do is get in the area and look out for them and try to record them on our body-worn cameras and try to get the information um, to try to, uh, we run the information and see if we can ob obtain a warrant to try to get these guys. Um, and they pretty much know we can't chase them. Um, but if they see us, out there with our lights and stuff on, you know, sometimes they try to taunt us. But the good thing about that, if we out there, uh, they move on. If we're not out there, they cause havoc. And um, that particular day you um, alerted us to the event at the Gold Room, uh, myself, Captain Jackson happened to be in the area and we went out there and they, you know, they, they came to the car and taunted us. Yeah, there's about know. 25 of them out there though, because yeah. they were all- So they taunt bikes. you and stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, the best thing we can do is record them and um, try to get them, um, arresting on warrants and stuff. So uh, yeah. the biggest thing I try to tell the guys is being proactive. And you, as you can see from the report, the pro, um, proactive traffic enforcement has done wonders um, in the city of Glen Arden. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw an incident, that, not to prolong this, but I did see an incident on in Ohio where there, the, there, a person had one of the ATVs and they used a police helicopter to follow them until they got, but the, I, a lot of people say well, that's a waste of, of, of resources, but it was effective in getting two people and getting the uh, vehicle off the street. So. Right, so uh, some, some police agencies uh, do that, but now um, they, because they do it so much, mm -hmm. it, it's become like um, an, an incurred expense that don't result into the results they need you know, the um, comparative. Right. So, and, and so that's what it is. So what's been effective is also responding, showing up and using their body worn cameras. That's been very effective um, in uh, many jurisdictions. So mm -hmm. we're trying to continue to use that and be out there because it's most definitely gonna pick up um, 
and you know, if we can get the state's attorney, you know, to send a message to these guys, well, we work pretty good. We have a great relationship with Prince George's County Police Department and, and other um, surrounding municipalities. So, well, and we do share information. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Councilman Harry? Yes, I, I do want to follow up on the ATV thing because that actually happened to me yesterday. I was backing out on Hay Street and mm -hmm. two ATVs. They're local and these, these are actually in the community. Came that. flying up the hill, flew around me, cut me off, you know, whining and weaving through the street. One is going to kill a child. I, I don't care what they say. Y'all can't chase, but then when they run somebody over right. and kill a child, then it's going to be a whole other issue. Thank you know, they have no insurance. They, if right. they hit my car, I'm not getting paid. I got to get my insurance to pay it. So they really need to do something about that. But that is an issue. So if you know where they reside, do you go and do y'all still confiscate? Because I remember Chief O'Donnell used to confiscate. Right. Now, if you, you have information in reference to where they reside in the main TPAs, I'd like to have the information. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'll do is I'll follow up with the state's attorney's office mm -hmm. just to make sure mm -hmm. um, what the guidelines are. But I most definitely like to pursue that. So if anybody have any information about any of these ATVs in the city of Glen Arden, I most definitely get the information to me so we can uh, pursue that. Okay. All right. And I appreciate again, that. Again, congratulations on being designated as the third safest city. So Thank keeping that trend going. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I appreciate it. Right. Um, Mr. President, I do have one other question for the city manager, and I meant to bring this up when I was speaking to. I know we got the notification about the um, building those apartments and looking at building apartments over in Woodmore. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure we stay on top of that and that we and list the expertise of our engineers because that's going to be a major project in the city and we really need to stay on top of what they're going to bring because previously when they wanted to bring apartments when i was on the council they were bringing it through lincoln properties and lincoln properties specialized in at that time section 8 housing only mm. you know and we're not trying to go back down that road because that's why we destroyed Glen on Glen on apartments and got Glen on hills because we're trying to get a diverse you know diverse um, uh, diverse type of uh, housing. So I just think we need, to, we need to make sure we stay on top of that. I know I had the clerk make all the council members persons of record. Right. I think in the administration are y'all persons of record also. Uh, I'm not sure that we did. So I think I need to, you need to sign up with that for sure. to make sure we can get all it because they're going to be submitting. I mean they got one of the best land use attorneys out there, Mr. Gibbs, sure. and they'll try to get whatever they can get over there. You know without having to go through the city. So I think we need to just stay on top of that. So, yep. Thank you. Council President. Uh, Councilwoman Jones. I just wanted to piggyback on what Mr. Herring, uh, Councilman Herring was saying about yesterday. I saw those, mm -hmm. and they had a little girl on the back of that ATV, mm -hmm. and he was doing wheelies. He came down Carker Avenue, and I kind of stood there and stared at him, you know, and then they went back up, and then two more. So we started, me and my sister started counting them as they were going down the hill. So it was like three of them too also, two dirt bikes and the ATV. But they had that little girl on the back and that, that what he was doing was dangerous. All right. And, and let's, as I stated, it's very frustrating, especially for the police, knowing that we can't do anything and for them to taunt us. And uh, that day, Captain Jackson and myself, you know, they pretty much came up to the vehicle and calling us, you know, different types of names and so forth, but we was able to um, mm -hmm. get some um, footage in reference to who they might be, because, you know, they got the masks and stuff on. Mm -hmm. But uh, any information you get for these vehicles in the city of Glen Arden, most definitely uh, get that information to me so we can follow up on it. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chief Brian. Mr. Curtis. Uh, uh, response to, to Council Member Hearing. I know that uh, from the phone call that I got, the mayor has uh, have received inquiries uh, from Mr. Gibbs as well, that they are ready to make uh, a presentation to the city when uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, when we can get it on your agenda. Okay, because I think we need to do that. Um, and when we do do it, I think we definitely need to have our engineers there just to go over it. So that we can have uh, an expert, expert expert in that in that too, because again, we don't know all the building codes and everything they're going to try to do, and they try to skip whatever they would need to in, you know. So um, I think we just need to make sure when we do meet with them, and I think we need to meet with them. We need to really set up a special work session so that we can just review everything. If they're going to bring anything, if they're going to bring any plans, then we just need to get, we need to get those in advance so that we can just be prepared for when they do come in um, and give their presentation. Um, Ms. Habata, could uh, the administration reach out for some just available dates for them? And then we'll circle it with the council uh, and then, you know, settle on a uh, best time that we can 
go have a special work session. Okay. All right. <laughs> Treasurer Stewart, some highlights from the financial report. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, thank you. Uh, of highlights I want to bring to your attention. And um, one of them is about the bond bill um, that the city was able to get. The bond bill that the city was able to um, to get awarded. It's for 400,000 for the construction of a new police station. And um, I'm in the process of put it in the papers now to retrieve that fund. Um, the other thing I would like to talk about is the gold room and the fact that in March they actually made $14,000, which is um, showing some improvement, but improvement in the sense of more events are being kept there. Mm -hmm. um, the staff is very busy working on it. It is a strain, but um, but you know, at, at least we know funds are being um, generated from that. Um, and the last thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that um, Penrose, Penrose, um, we bill them the permit fees for um, development that they're doing and um, we bill them for $237,000. And so far, or through to um, today, I should say, we receive $168,000 from them. So um, that part of the receivable is picking up. And also, personal property tax is getting a lot more um, juice in the sense that what we have billed so far and even billing from prior year, um, businesses are coming in to pay those um, balances off. So those are my um, updates for Thank you, uh, Treasurer Stewart. Thank you. Any questions for the Treasurer, Councilman Harry? Yes. Um, Mr. Stewart, as you know, I gave you the information about the um, public impact fees for the Wilmot Town Center development. So you, we also need to look at the public impact fees for Glen Island Hills because we still should be getting we should be getting public anytime they build in the community any residential uh, unit is usually a six thousand dollar impact fee that we're supposed to get a, a portion of. So I think that's still in play even for Glen Island Hills because there's a number of developments over there. I mean, a number of residences that were built that we should be and I know that the developer had to pay that unless the county waived it. I'm not sure if they did or if they didn't because they're in partnership with it. So. Yeah, you be one on the check into that. Oh. Yes, I will. And one of the things that especially ben, um, Penrose was talking about that the county had gave them some waivers and they were expecting to get some waivers from us, but we were not in the position to really give them a waiver on our to permits. Waive the permit fees. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'll be looking into that. And thank you for sending me that information mm -hmm. because I'll be really diving into it as soon as we settle off with the budget right. situation. Okay. All, right. All right, thanks. Yes, thank you. I did want to highlight, um, it, you know, if all the staff that's here and if staff does come back and watch this, as a councilman, I truly am grateful for everyone who lends a helping hand uh, to help the go room run. Uh, I know that it's uh, taken into your personal time with your families on the weekends or in the evenings. Uh, so just want to say thank you for, you know, pulling an oar and um, helping us keep up until we can get somebody in the gold room. Uh, so appreciate all of your hard work for everyone who contributes. So thank you. Uh, with that, um, oh, Mr. Bada. If the treasurer's concluded i have one thing that just came in at 8 39 we were hoping to have the grant information so we could tuck it into the ordinance that you just passed it came in at 8 39 after you passed it so we're going to have to ask you to do uh, another emergency ordinance they have to have spend eighty seven thousand dollars between now and june 30th <laughs> so, uh, my apologies 
Uh, the chief just got uh, got the message that uh, it came in at 8:39. He saw it at 8:42, and I saw it just a minute ago. So I'm okay. sorry, but uh, anyway. No, we understand it's uh, you know a good yeah. problem to have. Uh, have additional funds. Um, so so yeah. in June or um, well, you have a, a budget meeting coming up on the. We'll figure it out with you know with you. <coughs> yeah, we could put it on the agenda for the May twenty second. Second, uh, constant yield hearing. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And I believe we said this before, um, but if you could, Council Clerk, uh, for the next meeting, have the Public Works report in here since we now not on the agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. All right, if that's it, then we will move on. Okay, if that's it, then we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Before we do that, I do wanna uh, mention to our citizens that there is um, a senior job fair uh, that will be taking place on June 30th. I'm sorry, June the 3rd. So 50 plus senior job fair star, uh, that's gonna be held on June 3rd, starting at 12 p.m. at Fairmont Heights High School. Um, I'll, I'll ask if Ms. Sabata could possibly um, share this on our, can we share it on our website? It's certainly on there already. Right. Right. Okay, all right. Uh, so since you go to uh, Glen Arden uh, website and see the, the posting online uh, and register. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, the person of contact is Chris Stevenson um, and his number is, ooh, was online. So it's uh, 202, I'm mean, sorry, not 202, that's my number. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 240-466-1155. All right. With that, we'll move on to citizens' comments portion of our agenda. If you're in the room, please raise your hand uh, and I'll call on you. If you're online, please raise your virtual hand. If you do not know how to raise your virtual hand, then just post in the chat and I will recognize you. Uh, the floor is now open for citizens' comments, and the first hand I see is uh, Ms. Smallwood. Five minutes. Uh, when, people, when citizens come up, um, please state your name, and you have five minutes um, for your comments. <laughs> okay. Ms. Smallwood, can we just, can we um, go with Ms. Butler first since she's on the way up? And then we go for you second, please. Thank you for your understanding. Okay, good evening, Mayor and Council. Joyce Butler. Um, this is information to clarify some misinformation. The Glen Arden Host Committee are citizens of this city who have lived the history of Senator Tommy Boywater. I want to make it clear, we are not collecting or using city funds for this event. So therefore, we do not need to send the city treasurer any type of report. The funds are collected out to cover the event. So if you need any information, give me a call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Joyce Butler, 301-772-1869. Thank you. That's all. Oh, thank you, Ms. Butler. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Wallwood? Do you have the, the signature page? 
I got a couple of questions. My first question is, this in reference to the cost of your rate, is that going to remain the same or is it going to go up? Or are we giving money back to the county or are we getting a, uh, a tax, tax increase on our tax bill? That, that hearing is on May 22nd and then we'll make a decision then. Okay, also in the budget, I noticed where the uh, trash is going up. Can you tell me what the cost of the trash pick up going to be and where are we getting the money for this? Ms. Sabata? Uh, the trash uh, fee uh, is uh, part of the trash contract that that was extended with uh, Goody tr uh, Trucking. Is that the name? Of it? My Goody name? Trash. Trash. Okay, and um, they increase their rates, so it will be going up from uh, what was it four hundred and some thousand to seven hundred. Okay. It's and, good. Go ahead. I'm it's sorry. just going to be an increase on our personal property tax. Oh, no. Are we going to have money in the budget to pay for it? Yeah. So, so I would not have to see my personal property tax go up because of the increase of, of goodies. That's correct. Okay. Now, my other thing is about two weeks ago, I had an event down here and I heard Councilwoman Jones make false accusation about the event that took place. Now the event that took place was a wellness event. Um, she sent Courtney downstairs around three o'clock to tell us that he's coming to clean up. And I told Courtney, we don't need him to clean up. Our event is at supposed to end at four. We have until five to clean up to get out. Um, so she did not have to send anyone down, down here to clean up after us. We clean up this, this that room better than what anybody else had cleaned it up. I distinctly let Courtney know that one of the commodes in the latest bathroom wasn't working. So he fixed that. So Councilwoman Jones, if you continue to make false accusation about any event that I have, and I'm putting you on notice, I'm gonna take further actions on you. Thank you. Council President. Thank you, Ms. Smallwood. <coughs> Councilwoman Jones. In reference to what Ms. Smallwood has just indicated, I have not made any false accusations concerning any event that she's had. From what I understood, because I was working the gold room that, uh, that same day, uh, her event was from, from supposed to be from 12 to 4. Uh, the person that was supposed to be helping, uh, uh, working that event, her event, left, from what I understood, left. And that's when Mr. Campbell indicated to me that he just received a phone call that the person had left and that they were asked, that he was asked to come downstairs to address any issues or make sure that the, uh, the room was uh, back in place. I told Mr. Campbell when he said he had to leave, I said, that's fine, I got it up here in the gold room. Just make sure that if, if there's any trash, because I think they had food and drinks, if there's any trash left in the room, to please make sure that that is removed and gone to the dumpster and not set in, set, not to be set in the room overnight because they already have a rodent issue down here. So. Other than that, I would ask Ms. Smallwood if you would look, go back and listen to the uh, meeting again, if that's where you got this information, ask someone to help you comprehend what you're hearing, and you will see that I did not say anything pertaining to your event. The only thing I asked Mr. Campbell to do was to come back downstairs and make sure that the trash was, that there was no trash. And in fact, after he came down here, I came down here later and you were still here at 6.30. 
Thank you. Uh, point of I order. I still got five minutes. I still no, got some time. No, you minutes. do not, Miss Smallwood. Yes, I do. Miss Smallwood. Yes, I Ms. do. Miss Smallwood, respectfully. I still you, have some no, time. I did not no, use all of my not. five minutes. No, you do not. You walked back to your seat and you sat down and you gave up the rest of your five minutes. No, I didn't. I still had five minutes. Anyway. Miss Smallwood. Miss um, Smallwood. Anyway. Point of order. Point of order. Point anyway. Of order. I can uh, comprehend very well. Chief, uh, could you please escort Miss um, Smallwood um, to her um, seat, um, please? Um, and yes, that, I'm going to get you. Oh my God. <laughs> do whatever you need to do. Uh, do whatever Mrs. you need Michelle, to do. Michelle. Point point of order. Go ahead. Point Miss uh, Miss Smallwood. Ms. Smallwood, the next step will... Uh, Chief, could you please remove Ms. Smallwood from the building, please? She's always been a bully. I don't say it. Just let it go. I am, because I know that she's always been a bully. When we was growing up, she did the same thing. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, moving on. Are there any of the public comments? Online, if you have a comment, please raise your virtual hand or you can post in the chat um, that you have a comment and I will call on you. If not, I'll wait a second. Hearing none, the time is. Um, yeah. Point of order, Mr. President. This, I just want to make one uh, comment before we adjourn. Thank you, Councilman Heron. Yes, I just want to thank everybody for their participation in the expungement fair. It was a great event. Um, everybody pulled together. Councilwoman Jones, Councilwoman Ferguson, and Council Clerk were working at Prince Station like no tomorrow. So it went really smoothly. You know, Councilman Curtis was out there working the case search table. So we got those lines down. Um, I mean. Um, the um, director of public works, Mr. Simpson, I mean, they were, they were doing their thing. The public works was doing their thing. They were getting tents up. They were setting tables out. They were setting chairs out. Um, you know, uh, the city manager came in, you know, on, and she really probably shouldn't have been there, you know, but she took her time to come on in. You know, she had another function she should have been at. You know, um, Chief Brian, Captain Jackson, Lieutenant Robinson, and all the police officers. And I just want to definitely shout out uh, Michelle Chi. I mean, because she's just like, she's dynamite. I mean, every time we have an event, I call her. She's there for us, yes, you know. Yes. Um, definitely want to call her out, shout her out. And um, Councilman Harrison, I mean, I mean, he, he was just there for, you know, partnering with him is great. It's really great because he was there. He was everywhere trying to make sure everything ran smoothly. So it was a great event. We were able to see 80 people. We were able to expunge 62 records, wow. which is really good. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I mean, awesome. I think we did about like 30 or 40 last year. So we well over 100 of expunging records for, for returning citizens. So I just really want to thank everybody, you know, that really helped out because, I mean, it was it's a, it's a team effort, you know, and that's what we got to do. And it ran much smoothly this year. We didn't have to worry about nobody jumping us because the case the website was up this year. So it, last year it went down and they were like, when y'all going to start? When y'all going to start? And I'm like, I'm not going back out there. But this year, <laughs> this year was much smoother. So, I, again, I thank everybody, the council, you know, the, the, for their support, you know, the administration, all administrative staff, public works, you know, police. So, uh, really appreciate everything. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, job well done, Ms. Uh, Councilman Harry. Uh, and Councilman Fer Vice President Ferguson. I just want to say it was a pleasure serving and it was a very excellent uh, event. And I'm looking forward to next year working the computers and printing them out. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, the time is 9.01. This meeting is now adjourned.